Today I'm going to be setting up a heavy duty mast, a 25 foot mast on my minivan for portable operating. I'm going to try out two different configurations, a wheel mount, a receiver hitch mount. This is the kind of thing you would do when out portable operating for HF. I'm out here at a local lake. Uh, Utah Lake is what it's actually called. I'm in a place called Lincoln Beach. And as you can see, there's nothing out here. I do have a vehicle mount for a little antenna that I could put on here, but that's not really what I'm after today. I wanna to set up a real antenna system 25 feet up in the air. Chameleon Antenna sent out this mast system for me to review in exchange for this video. And what I'm gonna to do today is show you what this thing's capable of, and we're gonna set it up in a couple of different ways. And we're gonna be using two of those today. We're gonna to be using the wheel mount, which is the kind of bracket that you drive up on. Now, because I have a receiver hitch on the back of my minivan over here, you can actually set this up if you have a receiver hitch on your car or truck. And there are two other mounts that come with this mast system, and I'll talk about that later in the video. Now, there are a couple antennas I'm gonna be using for this demonstration today. I'm gonna to be using the MCOM 3 that I purchased a couple years ago. And I'm gonna be putting together using two stainless steel whips. We're gonna make a 20 meter dipole. That's gonna be rotatable. Now there's something else that's interesting about this mast. And because it's a heavy duty mast, this thing can handle a rotator and an antenna on the top of it. So we can rotate it from within the van. Now when you read the manual about setting up this mast, it talks about needing a ladder. If you're a tall person, maybe you can get by without it, but I tried doing the setup without a ladder on a couple of occasions and it just wasn't worth it. It's too hard for me to reach up. When I'm reaching up, I can't get the leverage that I need to actually do this in a safe manner. So I take along my six foot ladder and that's what we use this for. The 25 foot mast that I have right here comes in four sections. And in order to get those four sections up, the mechanism that locks it is a twist lock. So you pull the mast up and then you give the lock a twist and line it up. So they engage, you can see by the picture here, this is how they fit into each other. So while the mast was down at its lowest point, I put my two 20 meter sections of the, uh, the dipole that I put on here and I attached it to my S and K adapter. That thing just screwed on to the mast and I used the three eighth threads to uh, tighten my two 20 meter whips onto there. Now my second antenna is the NFED MCOM 3 that I purchased a couple years ago and I used their insulator or isolator rings and I clipped it on to the attached D-ring that's up at the top. That thing spins around at the top. So as you're rotating the mast, if you needed to do that eventually, that wire antenna is gonna stay where it needs to be. All right, so I took the ends of the NFED antenna and I just secured them because in the inv inverted V configuration, you're just gonna secure them just close to the ground and that's where I have them set up at. Today's not a particularly windy day, if there's a breeze. But this mast is rated for like, I think 75 miles an hour. I'll put the chart on here of the wind survival load that it can handle. There's no way I'm gonna set up a, a mast in that kind of a wind anyway. So now you can see with the, with the light breeze that's blowing, you can see that the mast is wiggling around and you'd expect that because it is non-guide, but it feels solid enough and it hasn't been moving enough to where I'm gonna be worried about it. This wheel mount setup has been relatively easy. You just drive up on top of it, make sure you're on level ground. Now what's nice about the mast setup this way is it fits really smoothly into that wheel mount and I'm able to hand rotate this thing using the manual method to uh, rotate my dipole in whatever direction that I need it to be. All right, so now the antenna is, both the antennas are set up at the top of the mast and the thing's solid. I'm feeling like it's gonna stay there. Let's get inside out of the breeze, out of the wind and uh, let's get on the air and see uh, what it's like. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, you're uh, pegging my meter here at uh, 10 over 9 uh, in my portable setup here, just uh, making sure the rig works. Uh, you're sounding big out here in Utah. Back to you. Roger, Roger. You're sounding great, too. So uh, you got a good signal coming in. You're doing a great job on your radio. Yeah, thanks so much. I just trying out a portable mast, 25 foot mast on the back of my minivan. Thanks for letting me check in. I appreciate that. And uh, you have a fantastic day. All right, now that you've seen the wheel mount and what that does for the mast, how easy it is to put up, I want to cover a couple of the other mounts before we get to the receiver hitch mount. This mount is the ground mount. This is, this tube is set up to where it's the same diameter of the inside of the mast like you'd find here on the wheel mount but it's meant to be buried in the ground at your QTH or more of a permanent location. The manual says something about, I think the hole is like a 12 inch diameter hole by 28 inches deep. 
and you put this bolt through the bottom and that keeps the mouse from going all the way down to the bottom. And the, and the instructions talk about putting pea gravel and uh, cementing around there. But this mass mount would be great for a permanent situation if you had a small area at your home, even in an HOA where you wanted to come out and quickly drop your mass into this thing, and get yourself on the air. Man, that's a perfect fit. And once winter's over, I may actually mount and install this into the ground at home so I have another place to put up an antenna in the backyard. I know my wife's gonna love that. The next mount that you can order with this Portamass system is, they call it a deck mount. It's an aluminum plate with another tube on here, and again with the uh, nylon sleeve or whatever material they're using for this. And the holes in this aluminum plate here are set so that you can screw this down, anchor it down to a deck that you might have, or even use, I, I suppose you could use cement anchors and screw it into your cement patio. But I may come up with an option for that. Now here comes the fun part. I've got an RCA rotator that I've used in a couple of different outings a few years ago, but I've never had a mast that I would trust putting it on uh, to run an antenna for a contest or something like that. So this one here is gonna be strong enough to hold that rotator. Let's get that on there. Now something I wanna talk about is the Porta mast topper. This mast topper here is a replacement. There's normally a plastic uh, cap that goes onto here and you take these set screws out that are all around the uh, top of it and the plastic cap comes off and this solid mass topper gets screwed into there. That's how you're gonna hold on to your rotatable dipole or other antennas or even what we're gonna be doing and that's mounting a uh, rotator on top of this thing. So I plugged in my little inverter that I'm running off of my 20 amp hour lithium battery because it's not very much draw. When I tested the rotator, it draws like 0.15 of an amp, which is nothing. So that means I can easily operate this uh, remotely and it'd be fine on my battery. So I gave a quick test here and spun it in each direction just a little bit to make sure before I go up to make sure my wiring is good and everything is set up. So I've got my uh, controller here, and uh, that thing's up 25 feet. It was a little struggle for me to get that up there. Let's see what it does. That is so cool. Yeah, now we're talking. For me, I saved the best mount for last. This is the receiver hitch mount. Almost any tow vehicle or any vehicle you have that has a trailer hitch receiver, this mount will fit into. It's as simple as sliding it in, and putting the mast on. So the receiver hitch is gonna be just what you'd expect. It's this aluminum tube with another nylon style sleeve inside and a reinforced bracket. And of course the hole for your hitch pin, put this thing into. Now what's nice about this is it does fit every receiver well because they're all the same. But what I've discovered is that they're not all a perfect fit and mine's no different. I've tried this on my camper and the truck and my minivan and they all fit just a little bit different. And you get this wiggle. The way around it for me was I added a hitch tightener. It's a simple little device that, I picked mine up but I think Harbor Freight, but I'll put a link in the description below for where you can pick these up. So depending on whatever trailer you're pulling, this can also help reduce the noise that that thing makes rattling around back there. And how this works, it slides over the top of the bracket and this little gap right here fits into here. That's going to push up against the receiver and that's going to tighten it down and keep this thing from moving. So when I bought my bracket, I thought it'd be great to put wing nuts on there so I could hand tighten these things and I wouldn't need extra tools. But what I've discovered is that I still have to tighten it down. I guess the older I get, I'm not as strong as I used to be. All right, that thing is going nowhere now. All right, now that I got the hitch mount in here, let's see what this looks like, how easy it is to get set up. One thing I've discovered is I don't like to put the mast in the dirt, so I use one of these rubber pads that I use on my RV for when you put the legs down when you're leveling out the system. I put that down, and that way I'm not gonna destroy or damage the uh, mast over time. And the same idea applies. Use that ladder to get that thing up in the air. It just, it's just worth it. It literally is so much easier. If you don't use a ladder, you could do it, but 
I just can't lift things like I used to, and uh, anything that helps me to make it better is a good thing. One of the big things that attracted me to the idea of using this heavy-duty mass, this port -a mass system, is that in the past, I've used my Jeep and put up 40-foot masts on the back of that thing with using those uh, military pipes, the poles that you can put together. And while that was great, you need to guide that thing, and if you need to put this thing down in a hurry, it takes an awful lot of time. Where the port -a mast I would say within three minutes, I can have this thing down and I'm on my way, especially if there's lightning or a storm coming up. You want to be able to take off in a hurry. I want to thank Chameleon Antennas for letting me test out this port mass system. I've got some big plans for this to set up on my RV, maybe on the pickup truck and doing some on-the-road HF. Thanks for watching. See you next time.